Let me say something for you. Subscribe to our channel for more videos. Bell button for notifications. So the first step to programming the L3000 is to go into programming mode. Uh, to do this, you're going to enter the four-digit installer code followed by 800. Uh, by default, the installer code is 4112, but if you change it, you'll just type in whatever your new installer code is. So once you enter that, uh, you'll see entering programming mode on the screen and then 20 installer codes. So this means that you're in installer programming. Now from here, there's really only a few things that we need to change. Uh, unless you have special needs, but f this is just very basics uh, to get your system up and running. So the first thing that we recommend doing, even if you brought a brand new system, uh, is to default the system. Now of course this doesn't apply in every case, so if you're just adding new sensors to an existing system, you're not going to default it because you'll have to reprogram everything. Uh, but other than that, it's a good idea just to make sure that you're starting from a base level where you know everything's what you want it to be. So to do that, uh, you're going to enter star 97, and then just push 1. Alright, now that the system's at default, or if you're not defaulting the system, uh, your next step is going to be to change your exit delay and your entry delays. So basically with these they're going to give you time to exit the system when you arm it as well as disarm the system when you enter your house. So star 3-4 is for the exit delay so we'll go ahead and enter that. And then your screen should show exit delay time uh, and at this point you're going to enter a two-digit number corresponding to your exit delay. Generally your exit delay you want to make as long or longer than any of your entry delays uh, just to make sure you have time to get out through any of your entry exit delay doors. So uh, we're just going to enter 60 seconds by doing 60. So that will give us a minute from the time we arm the system to exit the house. Now there's two entry delays and it'll automatically go to the next section here. So you can see it says 3-5 entry delay 1. So the two entry delays a lot of times people will use one of them but you have two available. Usually you'll have like one for a shorter delay and then maybe your front door is a short delay. Uh, but you might come in through a back door or garage door or something on occasion and that's a little farther away from your control panel uh, and you need to make it a longer delay. So let's say our front door is entry delay 1 and we'll do 30 seconds. And then it's going to automatically jump to entry delay 2 or field 3-6 and we'll enter 60 seconds here. So then it automatically jumps to the next section, but we can just leave that on the default. Now the next thing that we need to do is kind of the majority of what we need to do as well, and that is program in your zones. So it'll have some default programming for zones. Uh, for the most part, you can ignore that and you know just go with what you actually need to do. So let's get started with that. You'll need to go to field 5-6. Now this is a menu type programming area, so uh, what that means is it's basically going to take you through a lot of different information until the entire zone is programmed and then start you on the next zone, and the next zone, and the next zone until you're done. Uh, so the first thing that you'll see is zone number. As you can see it's got an A. The A kind of just tells you where you're at in the programming. Uh, for the most part, you can just ignore that. It's going to give you the information you need to know uh, right under it in words. So zone number, and then the two-digit number there is the two-digit zone number. 
So obviously it's starting us off on zone one. So if we wanted to do zone one, we just push star. If we want to do a different zone, we'd enter the two digit number and push star. Um, Another thing to note with this system, zone one is actually reserved for a hardwired zone. So you'll want to start on zone two for a wireless zone. Most people with this system aren't going to have a hardwired zone, so you'll just leave zone one alone. By default, it's kind of turned off. It's got no zone type or anything like that. So let's go ahead and go to zone two and see what happens here. Front door. So when I enter 02, it says front door. The reason it says front door is there's a default programming. And that default programming has already labeled zone one or zone two, sorry, as front door. Um, but let's say we want to make it back door. So let's go ahead and push star to do that. All right, so the next thing we see here, it says zone type on the bottom, and that's kind of telling you what this uh, programming area is for. And then the two-digit number is 01, which corresponds to entry exit number 1. So for our example, entry exit 1 is going to be for our front door. We're going to make this zone our back door, which we want to use uh, entry exit number 2, which is zone type 02. So you can see when I change it to 02, we now have entry exit number 2. Uh, I'm also going to just show you some other zone types, the common ones that you'll use. So 03 is perimeter. This is an instant zone when you're armed in stay or away mode. Uh, a lot of times you use it for windows or doors you're not going to enter, enter or exit through, things like that. 04 is another common one which is an interior zone type or an interior follower. So what this means is it's an interior zone so if you're armed in stay mode it's going to be disabled. That way you can move through the house without setting it off. And then the follower part means that uh, if an entry delay is triggered first it's not going to cause an alarm. So this is most commonly used for motion detectors because you don't want to be setting your alarm off when you're at home you want to be able to move through the house, uh, but also if you enter through an entry door, you don't want your motion detector to cause an alarm when it sees you. Uh, now, if you use an O3 zone type, uh, for instance, somebody opens a front door and before the system is disarmed during the entry delay, they open interior, so like a or sorry, a perimeter zone type. Uh, the alarm will sound. So the follower just means that it's going to follow the entry delay. And then the next common one is 09. This is your fire zone type. So it's used to obviously on smoke and heat detectors uh, which are another common component for security systems. There's definitely other ones that may or may not use on your system so make sure that you go through uh, the manual to read all the zone types we also have them listed out in our quick start guide which you can get off the website uh, but those are the main ones that you'll use so let's go ahead and change it back to zero two and then push star now report code uh, this one you'll almost always just keep the same so you can just hit star. The input type uh, again is going to be almost always kept at the three RF supervised. There's an unsupervised uh, uh, very rarely be used so you can just go ahead and keep that on the default. So this next section here uh, is for loop number or auto learn. Now the preferred way to do this is with the auto learn. I'm going to quickly show you how to manually do it. So the first thing you'll need to know is which loop number you're using. So this will vary depending on your zone uh, or your sensor. So you'll want to refer to your manual 
to see which loop number you need to use. Now another thing you did see here, you have about 20 seconds to enter something there or it goes back to the previous. If it does that, just push start. So uh, we're going to leave it on loop 2 just for this example, so we'll hit star here. Now when it goes to enroll mode, you're going to push 1 and then it'll say serial number. So here you'll enter the serial number which you can find on the device. It may be on the interior, maybe on the outside still, but it's the seven digit number. So we'll enter it here. And then you'd push star. And it's as simple as that. I'm gonna go ahead and go back here to show you the auto learn process. So the auto learn process, you actually will just trip the sensor a few times. Now one thing you'll want to keep in mind is if you have it too close to the system, it, sometimes it doesn't like to work. So I'm going to hold it a little further away and do it. But you can see I'm just opening and closing it. Front door. So you heard the one beep, so that was the first time it, it received the signal. Uh, two beeps will be the second time. If there is a zone description programmed in, it'll enunciate that, and then it'll show learned right there. So at that point, you'll hit star. It'll then show you the uh, code that it received. So you can confirm this either by checking it on the device like I showed you, or you can trigger your zone again. You'll get three beeps and a lot of C there, and then you can hit star. Now for this video, I am only showing you uh, door contact, but if you're using a, another sensor like a motion detector or a smoke detector uh, or a glass break, whatever it is, uh, the process is going to be almost exactly the same. Only difference is in the auto learn, you're going to tamper the device instead of just breaking the contact. Because obviously, you don't have a magnetic contact to do that. You could technically show motion with a motion detector, uh, that will work. Smoke detector, you could technically put snow, smoke on it. But generally, it's just easier to tamper the device. And actually, tampering the magnetic contact would work as well. But in this case, it's easier just to open and close. So for the zone descriptor, uh, this part is kind of optional. Uh, you know, we generally recommend it because it makes it a little bit nicer. Uh, and for the default programming, there's already a zone descriptor in there. So if you wanted to skip it, you'd hit zero. Uh, if you want to go into the zone description program, you'll hit one. Front door, front. So, uh, what it did there is it enunciated the full label, uh, full description, and then it went to the first word, which is front. Now, you'll find the full vocabulary index in the manual that comes with the system, and I'll show it to you briefly. So this is what it looks like, and you can see all the different words. Uh, some of them are multiple words, and there's a two-digit code next to it. So uh, I'll just go over some of the rules qu real quick here, the way this works. So to enter a new uh, descriptor, you're going to start by pushing pound, then you'll enter the two-digit number. So let's go do pound three three, which is corresponds to back. Back. So then, if you wanted to stop there, uh, as that's the end of your description, you'd push eight. That'll save it and exit the zone description mode. Uh, to go to the next word, you'll push six. If you entered the wrong number, you'll just hit pound and then another two-digit number. So let's go ahead and hit six. Door. Now it's already on door, 
so there's not really a need to change it but let's say this is a sliding door so we want to put back sliding door so let's do pound six nine sliding and so now it's so sliding uh, and we want to add a third word so we're gonna hit six and then we're going to do door which is zero four so pound zero four door and at this point we just hit eight to save that back sliding door and back, it's, door it's going to enunciate that and then it's going to automatically take you to the next zone so at this point uh, you could push star to go to zone three if you want to go to a different zone you just enter the two digit number and you just repeat that process for every zone you have. Once you've programmed in all the zones you're going to program in to exit out of the uh, many programming, you're going to enter 00 when it says zone number. And then it'll show uh, field 56 zone programming. And now you'll use star 99 to exit. Uh, you'll want to make sure you use star 99. If you do star 98, it'll actually lock you out of programming. Uh, which isn't a huge deal, but it's just a little bit more difficult to get back in. So then it'll exit programming mode, and uh, as long as you programmed everything following this video, you'll have a basic system up and running. Any questions?